Okay, um, we got her ready to go here. I wanted to um, show you a little something about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. I mean, there's a lot of spirits in the world, but let's, let's look at the word spirit for, for a minute once. Um, we'll just pull it up. And I thought of this this week when I was... Um, I'm not sure why, why it's, you know, it came that way, but I actually was thinking of Scott. So I could use him as an example because it ain't going to hurt him. That's going to be a good one. Um, the Spirit. Okay, so I pulled up the Spirit. There you can see up on the screen. And uh, let's, let's just, uh, what we'll do is, okay, we'll look at this. Actually, we'll get it in the, it probably looks the same in the Hebrew too, but we'll, what we'll do is, uh, Pull this up in the in the Hebrew, okay? I don't know if it's the same in the Hebrew as it is in the Greek, but we'll we'll look at it. Um, okay. So this is from Genesis about the Spirit of the Lord. Now let's see what it says under this one. I, I'm used to usually going into the Greek part of it. Yeah, it's. It's different there. Let's let's go into the um, into the Greek part of it, so it's easier for me. I'm used to going from that. We'll go with uh, Matthew three sixteen, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Now one of the reasons why people um, don't understand the Spirit of God is they don't know what the Spirit of God is. And now let's look at let's look what it what it what it is up in uh, in the Greek. Now listen real close with this and and this will, this really uh, will enlighten your mind. So now, um, okay, let's look at the word spirit right here. 4151 in the Strong's. I pulled it up there. And it means uh, pneuma. Uh, it says a current of air. A breath, a blast, or a breeze by analogy, or figuratively, a spirit. So that, in that sense, it's talking about like a ghost or something, you know. But it says, human, the rational soul. By implication, the vital principle, the mental disposition. And that's what we want to look at right there. The vital principle, the mental disposition. Now here's a, here's a way you can understand it. Uh, the principle the principle of something it's not like talking about a principle in a school but it's talking about what does that thing live by now like, like for instance like if we take Democrats and Republicans all of a sudden I see Scott's eyes flash because he knows the principle He knows the principle, the, 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 the principle that makes that system live, or the mental disposition, or the spirit of the Democratic Party versus the Republican Party. And that principle has a power or an influence. I mean, I can tell it, it influences God just by me talking about it. He's already, he's kind of, he's getting moving. He's moving a little bit, you know. And, uh, <clears throat> okay, so now that it, that's the spirit. There's a spirit behind or a principle that runs that type of the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. And you can tell they're two different, two different trains of thought, you know. Now, that's that way with everything. You go to any church, there's a certain type of uh, principle that they run by. Like some uh, churches, they'll... Uh, They'll run by uh, uh, maybe just praise and worship or other ones, and then they'll take the other part out. You know, like they won't, they don't, they won't believe in uh, uh, 
any of the gifts of the Spirit or anything. And so that's, that's their, the principle or what, or what that thing lives by. Um, the vital principle or the mental disposition, the way, it, the way this thing looks at. Okay, now let's, now let's think about this for a minute now. And I wanted to use Scott as an example, and it ain't going to hurt you. I know it isn't because it's, it's, going to be a good, it's going to be a good way of looking at it. Now let's, let's say Scott. I, I thought of this. The Lord showed me this, when, uh, this, this um, about three days ago. And I thought, that'd be a good example how to explain the spirit of something. Now, Scott, if, um, if you mention Dodge, he, he, they, it immediately it provokes a reaction, a, a reaction there, right? And now Scott, he's also, too, He's the kind of guy that likes to, um, like if something's getting tore down, he, he would rather see that kept or restored. You know, that's a, a mental disposition or a vital, that's the principle that he lives by. He doesn't like to have things thrown, by, thrown away, and that's, that's fine. That's good. You know, that's a good thing that uh, I believe things should be saved. They shouldn't just be tore down like, you know, they've tore down buildings and they've tore down railroads and different things. He likes to save those things. That's the, his spirit or the principle or the mental disposition of that, of, of Scott. Now, each person is different. You know, but the only reason I mention Scott is because I've known him for 30 years. And I, under, and I know him a little bit. Now, <clears throat> God has a spirit. We have God's spirit. But we have to be able to identify with the God Spirit. Now, the principle that, that, uh, that Christ works through, we're Christ. And this principle or the mental disposition of Christ is forgiveness. That's how you can judge whether something's the Spirit of God or not. Or love. Or mercy. Now, some people think the Spirit of God is just judgment. Where if you do something wrong, God does something back to you. That's a principle. At the other churches where we, where we used to be, the other churches where we used to be, they had a principle and or a spirit or or a, a disposition that drove them. Now, if you believe that God deals with you, if you do something wrong, then He does something in in a, in a counteraction to you. You're completely wrong. You're co that is not the spirit of God. That is not the vital principle or the mental disposition what God works from. He works from love. God is a is love. And because God is love, he cannot work outside of love. And so if we say that he's a God of judgment in that sense, we're wrong because God is love. Now that's, and I'm talking because we're in Christ. Now it's different if you're outside of Christ. Because someday God is going to have to judge the world. And judge each man. You know, and, and uh, they have to be found in Christ. And remember, to be found in Christ means to believe in Him. That's all it means. I mean, but that word believe is not a simple word. If you believe in a car, if you believe in Dodges, or if you're going to buy a car, you're not going to just buy, you're going to look at every little quality of that vehicle. Gas mileage, power, uh, warranty. And that, and it, when you know those things, that will cause you to believe in that car. 
making sense, doesn't it? It makes sense, you know? That's how we believe. But we got to make sure we're believing right about God. If we're believing something wrong about God, it's going to throw your whole world into, into chaos. If you think God uh, punishes you because you did something wrong this morning, you're going to feel condemnation every minute of the day because you're going to always be doing something wrong. You're, you're never going to measure up to, the, to that righteousness, uh, to that standard of God. Okay? So I don't know. I thought that was a good way to uh, kind of explain it a little bit uh, that the spirit, of, uh, the spirit of God is a, the way to identify it is the spirit of mercy and love and and, and understanding long-suffering. God is long-suffering. He's not, you know, you know, the way I learned God, it was, it was like you thought he was mad all the time. You know, like he had an anger problem or something, you know. But no, God is long-suffering. I mean, you think about it. God, is, God could have came, Christ could have came back to earth and, and took all his loved ones with him a long time ago. But he didn't. Because he's, because he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to him. If God dealt with uh, um, our loved ones, if they did something wrong, and, and, uh, and there was a, a repercussion from him, nobody would be alive. Because everybody's doing something wrong. And so God, the Spirit of God is a spirit of love and forgiveness, long-suffering. I think it talks about that in Galatians, doesn't it? And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. You know, you think of God, you think, you, you see this God and he's got a frown on his face. Well, that ain't God. He's, he's, he's a joyful God, you know. Uh, I like to see that picture of Christ where it says the laughing Christ, you know, or the, the smiling Christ. That's the way God is. And so if we're not careful, we'll get the wrong impression of what God is all about and how, how he really is. Okay, now, that's just kind of a sideline of what I wanted to go to. I do want to go to um, uh, the book of Luke and uh, share some of these things. Since we know, since now that we believe that God is a God of love, mercy, and um, you know what? He is a God of judgment. But you know what? If you're in Christ, if you're believing in Christ, that judgment is always good. It's always good. It's always, that judgment is always on to eternal life. Now let, uh, let me pull up something else here uh, to show you how this pertains to our life. Uh, I'll type in the word uh, sparrow or lilies. We'll pull this up here. Um, sometimes this this thing is uh, not real smart, you know, this computer, because I know there's sparrow in the Bible. I already know that. So we'll type in something else. Lily. I.E. Bear with me a minute. See if it'll pull it up there. Um, we'll get it. Just hold on. Consider the. Okay, we'll put in so. I know it's in there. Okay. Yeah, I could be wrong. I'm sure I'm... Uh, okay. Um, um, so anyway, um, I'm going to pull this one up here. That's, uh, we're in uh, Matthew 6.
I'll call this up here. Okay, um, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on, is not the life more than the meat and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Well, let's go back up to here. Behold the fowls of the air. They don't sow and neither do they reap. Now you can, uh, you can look at that in a little bit, little bit more depth. Is that in the religious world, they talk about sowing and reaping. But here it says, the fowls of the air, they don't sow, and they don't reap, yet your heavenly Father, he feeds them. So that's something for a person to think about. There's nothing you can do to get, to get closer to, that, to God as, as far as to bend his arm. In that sense, the only thing, the only way you can get close to God is just to believe in Christ and just to receive, just to receive him, just to believe that he exists and he died for you on the cross. That, that's, that's all you, you have to do. You can't, you can't say, well, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to come to church and then God will bless me because of it. Well, he will, but you can't use that as just a, a rule, as just a rule. You just believe. You just believe in him. Now, let's look at this a little, get, little more, he says. Um, and why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't toil, they don't spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith. Okay, now let's go back to again. We've got some awesome, we've got some different people. And all of a sudden i got to change my thought patterns. <laughs> but, but what we were talking about was the Spirit of God. How is God, what is God really like? And I mentioned that God is a God of love and forgiveness, mercy, long-suffering. He, he's not a God of, if you do this wrong, then he punishes you. That's not, that's, not the, uh, that's not the God we serve. And so the reason I brought this scripture up here was that if God closed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? So what I'm saying is, is that through his spirit, his spirit is just going to take care of you. His spirit wants to take care of you. But we have to, we have to really believe who he really is. You know, if we think he's a God of judgment, we're like, if I did, the, well, I, I did, I was pretty good today, but but I, uh, I kick the dog. Okay, now God's going to do something in, in return. You know, he's going he's gonna, to uh, kick me or, or my tire's going to go flat because I kicked the dog. You're not thinking right. <laughs> God doesn't work that way. He, doesn't, he only works in love, we were mentioned. It says, God is love. And so if God is love, he can't act outside of love. He can't do it. He can't. He can't be um, impatient. I mean, you think of all that you've done wrong. Can we get real for a minute? <laughs> think of all you've done wrong in your life. If he if he did those if he did those things, 
if he did what was wrong and he wanted to get back at you, you'd already be dead. I'd already be dead. Just for my very thoughts would, would accuse me. Just my very thoughts would say, okay, he's worthy of death. You know? But no, God isn't, he's not a God of, uh, he's not a God in that sense. All he wants is people to believe in him and to have faith in him. That he, that he came down to earth to redeem mankind so that one day you could go and live with him for eternity. And all those that can believe that and find the power in that, in that spirit that's behind that, will live, will live forever. But, you know, if somebody... Now, let's just say you, um, you guys went out and uh, you bought some lottery tickets. And there's like a... The payoff was like millions of dollars, you know. Okay, so you bought the, you bought the, you bought the tickets. Okay, one of you wins. Well, let's just say you all win. It's not possible, but let's just say you all win. Okay? But let's just say uh, John sees you the next day and say, why well, did you go get your, your money? And you'd say, you say, I don't really need it. <laughs> That'd be kind of stupid, wouldn't it? I mean, that'd be really stupid, you know, because, you know, you're driving around in an old car and, and you know, you don't have what you really need, you know, you, you, you're renting. Whereas if you, if you had the money, you could just go buy a house. You could buy a new car. You could, you could buy whatever you wanted. Well, look at, look at it this way. There was a man there. God came down from heaven, became a man, and paid the penalty for everything that you would ever do wrong, for every thought that you would, every bad thought you would have ever thought, and he paid that penalty for you, wouldn't it be kind of stupid not to believe, uh, to believe that, uh, to receive it, to receive what he's done? It'd be stupid, wouldn't it? You think about it. It'd be as stupid as not going and uh, getting your money from the lottery. You'd be missing out on all that, you know? And um, I'll say this too, is that, you know, when you come to Christ, when you just come to believe in Christ, the first thought that comes to your mind is, well, I'm gonna have to be a better person now. I'm gonna have to talk a little, a little softer. Uh, I'm gonna have to, uh, uh, do all the things that society, you know, because I'm supposed to measure up to this, uh, what a Christian is, right? God doesn't want you to come to him like that. You're never going to get anything straight, everything, anything totally straightened out. I can't even get things straightened out. How are you going to, you know, I, I can't get any, Scott, can you get everything straightened out? No. no, you know, we can't get everything straightened out. So we just come to God as we are, dirty, and, you know, in, the, in a spiritual sense, you know, uh, I mean, none of us are good enough. You know what I mean? None of us are good enough. And so why not just receive the uh, lottery free? You know, why not just take the, take the prize? All we have to do is just believe in Christ and we receive eternal life. Wouldn't it be a terrible thing is, uh, you know, you, you, you get, I'm not saying the judgment seat is like that way, but I'm just saying, let's just say you die. You go to heaven. I mean, you go, you, you go stand before God and, and uh, there's an angel standing next to you, and he says, um, uh, did, you, um, did you believe in my son that I sent? And the, the guy says, uh, no, I didn't think I had to. I thought I could do good enough on my own. <laughs> you know, what? that's going to just place you in eternal, in eternal fire. All you have to do is just believe that God sent a Savior, and He paid for your price. You know, I'm no better than you. I still have the same bad thoughts that you have, you know, every day, you know. But God has forgiven me because He placed me in Christ. And so anybody that believes is placed in Christ. It's just as simple as that. It's just as simple as saying, Lord, 
Forgive me. I just believe in you. And he takes you and he places you in him. And I'll explain that is that if now this is a poor explanation, but let's just say you were um, you were born of John Menard and you were his daughter or his son. Well, all that and then John Menard died. And you would receive all that John Menard had. But you, but, and so the guy comes up to you one day and he says, uh, your father died and he left you, bill, you know, John Menard's is worth billions of dollars, probably millions or billions of dollars. And you'd say, ah, it's okay. I don't really need it. <laughs> I can do better on my own. And so you go back working, to, working at Subway or wherever, you know. You know, I mean, it's just, you know, you think about it. Uh, God from heaven came down, became a man, lived the perfect life, and paid for all our sins that we would do any, from now until the day we die. And for, for, and for whoever would believe in him, he'll give him eternal life, regardless of his works. Let's just receive that today, you know, and uh, and I guess that's about all I'm going to say. <laughs> I guess we can just stop right there. So I guess you get the point. I was I'm recording this, so I better shut it off. <laughs> <laughs> okay.